peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part one of the Now and Then Beach Pyjama Sew Along. So when I was at the Knitting and Stitching show, I met the lovely Andre who owns Till the Sun Goes Down, which is the name of the shop where you can find beautiful vintage inspired fabrics and the pattern company Now and Then Patterns, who have some amazing patterns, the beach pyjamas being one of them. Now, I came across this company because Lisa Comfort had shown some of this fabric in the white colourway on her channel and she'd made the Doris dress out of it and I fell in love and went over to have a look and then just basically drooled over all the patterns. I got talking to the lovely Andre about what I do on the channel and the sew-alongs and, and she very kindly gave me the beach pyjama pattern to make up and use for a sew along which is what this weekend's videos are going to be so it's very unusual for me but for this is the first time that i have made this particular pattern usually i like to test things out before i do a sew along for them but i thought given the nature of this pattern i thought i would be able to make a pretty damn good garment straight off the bat without having to make a muslin so that's what i did and i'm so happy with them they are very very comfortable the beach pajamas are basically really stylish loungewear that you can throw on feel comfortable and look glamorous in and I also would use this as a swimsuit cover-up and I'm going to a beach party wedding later in this year in Ibiza and I totally plan on taking this with me because I think it's gonna look awesome. So this is definitely this is the this is the first time that I have made this garment and whilst I am incredibly happy with how this one has come out I am gonna make a few tweaks to the next one that I make and there will be a next one. I ended up going with a size 14 bust and a 10 waist and I'm actually going to drop that to a 12 bust and an 8 waist in the next iteration that I make but I'm going to keep the hips at a size 16 uh, but that is the only difference that I'm going to make everything else on the pattern worked out beautifully. So today we're going to be covering choosing your pattern, making any alterations that you might need to and also drafting a waist tie pattern piece. So let's get started. Okay, for this sew along you're going to need your pattern, fabric, bias binding, you can make your own or you can use one that is bought like I have done, I am leaving links to all of this stuff down below, pins, matching thread, scissors, French curve, marking tool of your choice, make sure that whatever you use does come off of your fabric and use it on a test piece of fabric first to make sure that it does come off. You're also going to need pattern making paper, a sewing machine, an iron and an ironing board. Those items are all too large for me to put on the cutting table, but you will need them. Okay, so according to the pattern, I need to be tracing, realistically, I need to be tracing a 14 bodice, a between an eight and a 10 for the waist, and a size 16 for the hips. Now, when judging what size you want to trace you want to have a look at the finished garment measurements now the hips and the waist on this are actually technically quite free sized because uh, they get pulled in they're wide across the hips and they do get pulled in by the belt that you're putting on so actually the only finished measurement that is available here is the bust now the size 14 which is a 39 bust finish measurement is 44 inches and for the 30 for the size 12 which is a 37 bust the finished measurement is 42 inches so that is a wearing ease of five inches so they are they are meant to be oversized now i'm actually going to go for the size 12 bust and i'm going to go for the size 10 waist and i am going to go for the size 16 on the hips which is going to be an interesting one to trace but we will cross that bridge when you come to it basically what you want to do when you're trying to work out your size is have a look at your actual measurements, have a look at the finished measurements, see the amount of wearing ease and decide if that is something that you want. Now this, the way this garment is meant to be fitted, it is a very loose style with then the shaping coming from the tie at the waist as well as the darts that are in there but yeah this is what's meant to give you the shape so it is meant to be blousy and oversized. So I'm going to go by the pattern recommendations 
and put in the five inches of wearing ease. The next thing I'm going to do is iron my pattern pieces and then trace them. I get a lot of questions asking why I bothered to trace them when I could just cut the pattern tissue out. These patterns, especially indies, are expensive and I would like to be able to use it multiple times over the years and if I put on or lose weight over the years and I have cut out the smallest or the largest size, the largest wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but if I'd cut out one of the smaller sizes, which I need to do, I'm in the middle size range, then I have lost access to the larger sizes, so I would need to repurchase the pattern. So that's why I trace mine. And the reason you want to iron your pattern piece is so that you can get an accurate trace and the paper lies flat and behaves itself. Okay, so I like to write down what sizes that I'm going to be tracing so that I can refer back to this easily rather than having to keep checking all the measurements on the pattern chart. So I've written down the 14 bust, 10 waist and 16 hips and I have my pattern underneath there and I have my pattern making paper over the top. I have a large roll which I got from More Plan, and again that will be listed in the description down below. So what I'm going to do is trace out the two pattern pieces that I need. That's one of the nice things about this pattern, that it's only two pieces. I am then going to do the alterations that I need to do because Andre mentioned that I would probably, she said, oh, you're tall, you're probably gonna need to d uh, deepen the crotch length. And um, that is my actual crotch length. And the pattern comes up just under, when you take off the seam allowances, it comes up at around about 29 inches. So yes, I'm gonna add a good two and a half inches to the crotch depth so that I am comfortable in my beach pajamas because that would be good. Yes, I'm gonna get tracing. Hopefully you can see at the top here, this is the 14 and I've gone into the 10 at the waist and then I've come out to the size 16 at the hips and I've literally done this with my French curve and for this one I kind of went for a gentle curve from there and it's it's literally a case of looking at it and working out the best way and the best curve to get in. The waistline I have smoothed out because that was quite jagged and I've done the same thing up here. So just picked a point on my French curve and kind of smoothed that line into where I needed it to be. And now I'm just gonna to continue to trace the rest of the trouser legs at the size 16 all the way down there. Right, so I have my pattern pieces traced. There are only two, this is very nice. Kind of again, done the same thing here so it's the 14 here and that's uh, the dart's going to fold in and it will end up and it's I've just smoothed the waist out and then come out to the size 16 at the hips and the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that I have not put in the pockets uh, it's a really lightweight fabric that I'm doing it with and I never use pockets in these kind of things and I find that if you put things in then they can just drag down the line of the garment so personally not a fan. I do like them on things like the 8577 shirt dress because they are a feature and then they're huge and that's good. But still, I don't really put anything in them. <laughs> but we've got the waistline marked on here and this is the length and shorten line. Now there is actually a length and shorten line uh, this sort of around about this area on the pattern piece, but I've not included that because I need to lengthen mine in this area because of the crotch depth. So what you wanna do, okay, so with my soft tape measure and you want a soft tape measure and you're gonna measure it with the tape measure on its edge and you wanna do that because it will then, it will easily curve around, it will easily bend around the curves. So you're gonna measure from the crotch point to the waist and that is 14 and a half inches and the back is 15 inches I've already measured that and my actual crotch depth and I have measured that from my waist to my waist up between my legs and that is 31 inches so there's an inch and a half difference and that my crotch my crotch depth was um, measured um, taut against my body so I also need to add in some wearing ease and I'm thinking I'm going to add in another inch and a half so I need to add three inches to the length of this pattern piece in the crotch area so what I've done this this is the waist length here and I've measured down six inches and I have drawn 
a line perpendicular to the waist measurement across there and that's going to be my lengthen and shorten line. I'm going to do add in my extra length here at this line and what you want to do is uh, my total measurement the total current measurement for this piece is 29 and a half inches front and back and the desired length that I would like it to be is 32 and a half inches front to back but which means I'm adding in three inches of length but I want to split that between the front and the back so I'm actually going to add an inch and a half onto this panel and an inch and a half onto the back panel which will give me the extra three inches of length that I require in this area. There is also a lengthen and shorten line up on the bodice part of the beach pyjamas as well and I'm going to add an inch of length in here as well because I have a long torso. This is a standard measurement that I need to make and I'm going to do it for this one too. Okay so my pattern piece is all cut out. The first thing I'm going to do is add the length to the bodice so you want to make sure that your grain line is put in and this is going to be used as your reference line uh, for making the points stick together in the correct alignment. So I have drawn an inch wide box which is the amount of uh, length that I want to add and then I've drawn a perpendicular line through that and these are what are going to match up with your grain line. So I'm going to cut right through this and then stick it down to that. Right, so you can see here I've cut it in, cut it in across that line and I have stuck down this first one and this is the grain line, that's the line that I've drawn on the extra inch and then this is the grain line as well and that's why you need to have this line on your extra inch so that you can match things up perfectly. So I'm going to make sure that that is all straight. I'm going to tape that down and then I'm going to smooth out those edges. So this edge was very easy to smooth out, it's just join the, joining the lines. This one I started at this very corner and made it join in with the waistline that I had previously drawn. So this, hang on, so that's, this is what I've ended up with. So I've now added an inch of length to the bodice portion of the jumpsuit so I now need to add my inch and a half to the crotch depth of the front of the jumpsuit. I'm going to be doing these exact same alterations to the back piece as well. So again this line was very easy to straighten out. This one was a little bit bit different so I've started from up here and I've taken off this bit here so I'm going to cut along this line down here and then I've actually added a little bit there but it's given me a nice smooth line, which is what you want to end up with. So I'm going to cut this piece out and that's the front pieces done. The very last thing that I did was measure the inside leg measurement and then measure my inside leg measurement. And I did allow for an extra sort of inch and a half on my, me personally for the, hopefully, the length that the crotch is going to be to. And I've decided that I wanted to add an inch of length to the trousers. Now, I should have done this before I cut the bottom of the trousers out. So I'm having to stick a piece of paper down and add that inch of length in. But for the other, for the back portion, I'm just going to draw it onto the pattern piece that I've traced and cut it out in one go. And that's my back piece done. So we've got an inch added to the torso. I actually decided to err uh, on the side of caution and add a quarter, three, one and three quarter inches to the crotch depth on the front and the back. So I have done that here. This is the bottom of the dart, although it looks like I've cut it through there, but I, it does finish right there. And then I have also made a note that I've added one inch to the length of the trousers. So when I come back to use this um, at a future date, all of the alterations I have made are very clearly on there. I mean, to be fair, you could probably just have a look and measure what, you're, what you've done, but it doesn't hurt to write it on whilst you're doing it. And that is what I've done. So now I need to draft a waist tie. The pattern doesn't come with one because you can use ribbon, you can use your bias binding, or you can use the same fabric that you're going to make the rest of the pyjamas out of. So I'm actually going to draft myself a waist tie, so I'm going to do that now. So I've decided to err on the side of caution and I have gone for a 40 inch long waist tie and I have made it an inch wide. So it's going to be folded in half, sewn along the seam line. I have done a tapered end which I think will look very pretty and I then so I've drawn the actual waist tie on and then I've added the seam allowance all the way around and that's three eighths of an inch so I have put on the pattern piece what I have done If you 
have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. So if you would like to make your very own pair of these, you can find all those details in the description box down below. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!